Today we offer a votive mass in memory of the finding of the body of St. Clair of Assisi. And often we could ask the question, why would God allow the body of his saints to be lost? And indeed this happened not only in the life of St. Clair, but also in the life of our Holy Father, St. Francis. And providentially there are many reasons why God would permit such a thing to happen. And in the Uh, finding of the body of St. Clair, we could probably safely conclude that, again, our Lord would wish to bring to attention uh, to Christian girls, especially to Catholic girls, uh, the value of virginity and how that is such a wonderful gift to be preserved, and most especially how that gift is lost so often in our modern society as it seeks to lure all types of souls, both the young and the old, into depraved practices of immorality contrary to the Sixth and Ninth Commandment. And so, in the life of St. Clair of Assisi, we we have put put, put before us the shining virtue of virginity, for often in our modern world, virginity is so often misunderstood, and indeed, it is considered almost to be sterility, but yet, that is not the case, and we see this most clearly in the life of St. Clair, and more especially in the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For virginity is not sterility, indeed, virginity is fecundity, because virginity awaits, as it were, uh, the fulfilling, and so, St. Clair would give up the right uh, to a family in this life in order that through her consecrated virginity she would give life to many souls. And indeed, uh, in today's gospel is ascribed to her, that is ascribed to her on this memory of the finding of her body, that whatever you ask in my name will be given to you. And in the life of St. Clair, she would ask many things of the Lord and would be granted many things, miraculous things. Indeed, St. Francis himself, when Often he would have trouble with some of the incorrigible brothers. As a last resort, he would bring them to St. Clair of Assisi, and she would always, uh, through her admonitions and through her speaking to them, bring them to their senses, and ultimately they would all become good brothers in the Franciscan Institute. And so she was constantly giving birth because in her consecrated virginity she had nothing to worry about except the the, the salvation of immortal souls. And so she would give her life entirely. She would show the the world, especially the Catholic Church, how to use the things of this world in the authentic worship of Almighty God. Indeed, it is pretty well known that historically the decoration of the altars with flowers and whatnot came about with the advent of the Franciscan Institute and we can safely see very clearly that it was most likely at the Council of St. Clair of Assisi for she truly saw that God had created all things to somehow be incorporated into the worship of Almighty God and so she would declare that for, for instance in the case of a flower that it has not fulfilled its destiny unless it has been used in the worship of God. And if that is true of the inanimate objects or the animate um, objects without souls and inanimate objects, how much more so is it true for an immortal soul that that soul must be used for the worship of God. And so St. Clair would consecrate herself entirely to the service of Almighty God and in doing so she would show the whole world how it was uh, how it was to worship God, how it was to show forth the glory of Almighty God. And indeed, her life has much to teach those even in the marriage state. For in the marriage state, it is the spouses too must also have a virginal mind. For in one sense, they may lose the physical virginity, but their minds must always remain virginal. That is, always fruitful, always willing, and always ready to accept the saving grace of Almighty God and the influx of grace into the soul, so that a virgin, as uh, Carol Hauslander points out, virginity is like uh, the robin's nest. It is empty, but yet it is not sterile, for everyone knows when they see the robin's nest, they know it is awaiting, and so they wait patiently for the day when the egg 
uh, is placed in the, in the nest. And so we must keep ourselves free of all clutter. We must try to remove all the clutter of our souls, always having in it an empty spot. But we must never consider that that empty spot is sterility, for it is true fecundity, for it waits the grace of God, and then it goes forth, uh, showing to the world the fruits of grace, and hence the love of God, and hence the soul, in doing so, glorifies God. And so, St. Clair would give glory to God each and every moment of her life. And so, let us strive, whether we are uh, called to the virginal state, or whether we are called to the married state, or any other state within the mystical body of Christ, let us always remember that while some give up physical virginity, that we are all called to keep a virgin mind. And so St. Clair always had a virginal mind, and she would preserve that virginity even in its physical integrity. And so she would truly become an oblation in honor of Almighty God. And so the finding of her body is a most special event in our modern world, for it draws attention again to the power of virginity and the need both of consecrated virgins and also of, of that virginal state in which a married couple keeps a virginal mind where they sacrifice their physical virginity for the sake of the kingdom of God. And so she is a most important saint in the life of the church, and we must turn to her most especially in our society, in our culture, which is so contrary to consecrated virginity. Let us turn to St. Clair asking her to intercede in order to overcome the hardness that has seemed to crept in most especially in the life of American girls. For when they have been raised up in this culture of feminism and they are taught uh, the feminist tenets, then they do not see the value of consecrated virginity. And yet it, it is most special in the life of the church. Indeed, the consecrated virgin has a great, deep, and profound love for the married state and is one of the reasons why she consecrates herself in order to do prayer constantly so that all marriages become holy marriages. And so the marriage sanctified by the grace of God gives to the church many priests, many religious, and many married couples so that the mystical body continues to grow and to spread throughout the four corners of the world. And so... Let us never disparage the sacrament of matrimony, but let us understand it as the true consecrated virgin understands it, for it is one of the very reasons why she sacrifices uh, the right to marriage in herself in order that marriages may be sanctified by her constant prayers and her constant love for all the works that the Lord has done. Indeed, it has been condemned by the church and is even considered a grave sin for a consecrated religious to have a disparaging outlook on the sacrament of matrimony. And so let us strive to do all things well as St. Clair did all things well so that we all come to know and understand the vast, the vast riches that are contained within the mystical body of Christ and how every member of the mystical body consecrated to God by virginity or consecrated to God by the marriage state or in any other state how many riches are possessed in the mystical body of Christ and how vast is her mission and her apostolate to sanctify every human endeavor. And this is most especially understood by consecrated virgins as it was understood first and foremost by the Virgin Mother of God who did everything for the sake of all vocations within the church and, with, and for, the, for the whole of the apostolic labors of the church. And so... Let us strive, each and every one, according to our state, to pray for the other state that they may persevere in the grace that God has given them so that the mystical body may be upbuilt, upbuilt as it was upbuilt by St. Clair, who singularly showed the world the value of consecrated virginity so that the world may come to know the value of all the gifts that God has given us and so that everything we do, everything we say, and everything we, we use may be used for the glory of God. And, in, and after a life of glorifying our Lord in this life, we may experience his glory for all eternity in heaven.